Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. If XRP is finally going to break out, if it's finally going to climb to the upside, and many people think that it absolutely is the time for that, this would be the moment for it. And, and right now, the market's actually breaking out a bit. Bitcoin up to $52,319 after teasing the $52,000 level much earlier today. You have XRP above $0.54, cents, uh, which was... Uh, it, it, an important level of resistance that we're currently above, at least. We'll see what happens here. But what I want to focus on in this video is something that I mentioned I would um, in my last video, which is narratives that can absolutely screw you if you, if you believe them and follow them hook, line, and sinker. And one of the things that I'm seeing, one of the ideas I'm seeing bandied about quite frequently is this idea that um, the, the Bitcoin ETFs, they're what will lead us to the promised land. And that could screw up XRP holders too, though. You understand that, right? I'll explain why. It, I'll tell you in the outset, and then we'll get into the specifics of it. It's, it's because if people believe Bitcoin's going to go much, 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 much higher than it actually will because of narrative, in this case, Bitcoin ETFs, that will make people believe, believe that XRP is going to go much, much, much higher than it potentially will. And, which is not to say it can't go really high. Like, you know me, I'm Mr. XRP Bull. I'm very optimistic. And as long as Bitcoin does hit a new all-time high, yes, I think XRP is going to hit a new all-time high in enter price discovery. But just be cautious here, because I think there are some misconceptions surrounding what this actually means and some additional thoughts on this topic. But um, yeah, as it pertains to XRP specifically, uh, I, I, I'll say it again. I've been saying it a lot recently. I've never felt this optimistic for the future of XRP for so many reasons. But, uh, but before going further and breaking some stuff down, for I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And, you know, I heard the blockchain backer say today, and I'll have to paraphrase here, not to put words in his mouth, but it was something along the lines of basically, um, this would be the, X, the time for XRP to go. And he goes into the technical analysis of why he believes what he believes, but basically, if, if, if it's going to happen, this would be, historically speaking, a reasonable time to suppose that it's going to go. And it, he doesn't mean he's saying today or tomorrow, literally, but in terms of the chart structure, it does look like this would be the time. Now, of course, he's also been warning, as you well know if you've been following him, um, and he's, he's in the minority on, on this, but, but by the way, doesn't mean he's wrong. I'm just noting he's in the minority on this. Um... But he's had minority positions before that have absolutely panned out, which made lots of other people that were in the majority look like absolute fools, especially when they were rude to him, which doesn't, didn't make sense to me. Um, but he, here's what he said just a few hours ago. I do cheer for all of you Bitcoiners. I'm just going to express concern at concerning levels. I go against the narrative often, like being bullish during the despair of 2022 and 2023. We're right under the 702. I'm cheering for you, but it's important to know where you are. And I think that's totally fair. And I appreciate that. I mean, so the way that I look at this anyways, like I love to consume opposing points of views from people who are intellectually honest and insightful. That's useful in life, right? Because any human, any given human, me, you, we are not experts on most things. And so the way to come to reasonable conclusions on our own, since we can't be experts on most things in life, we don't have the time to do that, is to hear from people that know what the hell they're talking about, that are trustworthy, get the perspectives, and then uh, we just have to do our best to decide what we think makes sense. And, and in this case, for me, I'm just admitting I don't, I, I legitimately don't know. I'm just saying it's the right way to uh, come to conclusions in life. And sometimes you'll be compelled. Sometimes it'll be one of these situations like it is for me here. And I'm like, well, I'm not completely sure. Uh, still optimistic, not completely sure. Uh, but we're going to have to sit tight and find out here. All that to say, um, I love to see the opposing viewpoints. And that's why on my channel, I highlight all sorts of opposing viewpoints. I'm not trying to drive a narrative. I'm trying to drive discussion. And I think that's the right way to approach any number of topics in life. Talk about it. Share opposing viewpoints. And some of you are going to feel more strongly that the blockchain backer is right. And some of you are going to feel more strongly that someone like Credible Crypto is right who says, no, we're going to a new all-time high. Uh, and, 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 and then some, basically. Um, and so I responded to the blockchain backer and I just said, rational people appreciate hearing your honest perspective. You've gone against the grain a number of times and been correct. I think it's a mistake for anyone to not take your thoughts very seriously. 
That said, I hope you're wrong. But I know you've said many times you'd prefer to be wrong too. And he, yeah, and he said, because, I mean, it would be to his benefit if he's wrong. He's just saying what he believes, which is what he should do. Exactly. And so I love to see uh, honest intellectual thoughts on this and, uh, and honest in, in good faith discussions without people screaming at each other. Because that's the stuff that is such a turnoff to me. When people get rude, I disagree with you, emotions, you're the bad guy now. Just shut up, you little brat. Like, I hate people that act like that. It's just, oh man, the bane of my existence. I just, because it doesn't help us get closer to the truth. That's what bugs me about it. So g moving along though, check this out. There are all sorts of posts. I'm just kind of setting the table and then we're really going to get into the meat of this. So stick with me here. I promise it'll be worth it. Bitcoin maximalist Anthony Pompliano posted the following this morning. There was $631 million of net inflows to the spot Bitcoin ETFs yesterday. That is 14 times more demand than the network produced in the same day. I don't think people understand the magnitude of what is happening right now. Okay, we shared some data that's factual, but uh, let's be careful about the narratives and you'll see why as we go through the video. But okay, still cool to see that, right? Here of on-chain analyst Will Clemente shared the following this morning. Roughly 70% of Bitcoin supply still hasn't moved in at least a year, while ETFs are seeing $500 million of inflows a day. Don't need to be an economics PhD to know what's set up to happen next. And so there you go. The ETF inflows are so high. You don't be a dumb dumb. You know what's going to happen. Well, do we, though? Well, again, let me set it up a little bit further because there are a lot of people driving this narrative, and I think it can trick people. People think, oh, yeah, well, of course it's happening, and it will continue to happen, and it could never be different, which means any coin I hold, including Bitcoin, XRP, ETH, pick your coin, it's going to go even higher than it otherwise would have. Uh, don't fall for it. Just hold on. Then you have Alex Kruger, very popular analyst, self-described economist, 164,000 followers on X. He wrote $4 billion in inflows <clears throat> is a very large number of Bitcoin ETFs are a resounding success. Now, folks, I would agree that to this point, these Bitcoin ETFs are a resounding success. I'm just warning that there are false narratives popping up around them. That's it. That's all I'm saying here. I think that the impact of these investment vehicles, these Bitcoin ETFs, over a prolonged period of time will be profound. I'm just, it's just not the end-all be-all. It just isn't. But yes, of course it matters. Um, and then there was also this. Huddle 15 Capital wrote, and this actually is really cool. I admit, like, this is, this is pretty cool. The new spot Bitcoin ETFs hold more Bitcoin purchased. Uh, 228,400 Bitcoin worth $11.3 billion in just 22 days. Now, folks, the reason that is incredible and kind of eye-popping is because, as Matt Hugan points out, and he's a, a CIO at Bitwise, he wrote, that's more than 1% of all Bitcoin. That's right. The Bitcoin ETFs, after about a month, have 1% of all Bitcoin. So there you can look at this and on the surface like, well, holy cow, they're right. Bitcoin's going to be worth flibbity flobbity babillion because why the hell wouldn't it be? And probably by tomorrow. Not so fast. This is why we got to break this down because otherwise people are going to get potentially destroyed here. I saw this post from TXMC and I'm a fan of this guy. He's uh, obviously incredibly intelligent. I like his perspective. Uh, he goes against the grain. Uh, from what I've seen, he seems to, and I'm, I'm not, I don't know like 100% of like all of his positions, but it seems to me that he frequently agrees with the blockchain backer. And so they may have a, a certain amount of, of perspectives in common there, but he's not always, he's not exclusively talking about just the crypto stuff, although he is pretty heavily uh, monitoring that, of course, but just on a macro scale, what the hell's happening? And so always appreciate his perspective. He used to be with Glassnode, the on-chain analytics firm. I'm a big fan of Glassnode as well. Um, and so knowing that's where he's coming from, it was cool to see that he gave some props to chart analyst Credible Crypto. His Credible Crypto is on the other side in terms of what he thinks is most probable. See, this is the civil discourse I'm talking about. Credible Crypto believes that we've been in a cycle since 2018 that actually hasn't topped off. It's just an elongated cycle effectively. And uh, he says we are going to be seeing new all-time highs. Um, you know, others, some others disagree, but, uh, TXMC saw a post from Credible Crypto, which I'm about to dive into, and TXMC wrote the following. I may think a different outcome for price is more likely, and by the way, you can see put asterisks around that, because likely, not certain likely, but no one actually knows. It is important to prioritize scenarios and have a plan for each. Credible Crypto offers excellent perspective here, much respect. And I saw that and so I was like, oh, well, what, what exactly did Credible Crypto have to say? 
Well, that's what I was And he has a great breakdown. Incredible Crypto says some stuff here that I haven't seen anybody else say on Tay Webernet about this. Um, now, first, I do need to note that he was reposting this from TXMC, which is a short post. Uh, TXMC wrote, ETFs are buying 500 million a day and you're not bullish on a new cycle? And, and he put that in quotes because that's the type of stuff that other people are saying, as I just highlighted. Then he says, markets including Bitcoin topped in late 2021 with rates still at zero, risk appetite at full blast, and the Fed still buying over $100 billion per month in QE, quantitative easing. Narratives only take you so far. Okay, and so I read that, I was like, point taken. That is a fair point here. And so that is what Credible Crypto reposted, and he wrote the following. And I think you guys are going to find this very interesting and insightful. And I think if you take this to heart, like, it can help you from damaging your own financial well-being, basically. <laughs> so here's what he had to say. <clears throat> While I do think that we are on an aggressive path to new all-time highs at the moment, the tweet below is important to submit into your mind, as there will be a point in the relatively near future when a major crash slash correction will be deemed impossible because we are in a new paradigm and this time is different because we have TradFi pouring money into the ETFs. And of course, TradFi is just traditional finance. And he says, at the end of the day, for every major parabolic rise, there is a major crash and vice versa. You don't get unhinged greed and euphoria and the vertical price appreciation that comes with it without an equal and opposite reaction when the euphoria peaks. This is coming from someone who has been calling for such an aggressive rally before the ETF approval, before most here decided a new high before the halving actually was realistic. And so I'll pause to note here, uh, while he's not promising that that is the timeline for a new Bitcoin all-time high, he does think that that is absolutely plausible. Uh, now, the, the Bitcoin halving will be in April. I don't know the exact date, uh, probably around April 20th. Uh, so that would be quick. So you're saying within, the, just say roughly the next two months, new Bitcoin all time. That would be bananas. Now, if we do get to see that, my God, that will be the most exciting day for me because I will have way more confidence about XRP and all sorts of my other altcoins, frankly, hitting new all-time highs. But specifically XRP, that's the one I'm most interested in because, I mean, I'm biased. Yeah, it's my largest position. Been in this bitch over six years. So, yeah, <laughs> I will be thrilled if we see Bitcoin hit that. Because it, to me, it seems like it's, it's if it's not literally a requirement, it's pretty damn close to one, so far as I can tell. Anyway, Credible Crypto continues. And I am telling you now, in the same way, that while these ETFs and their effect on the demand side of this equation is significant, it is not the be-all, end-all of this asset class, nor will it, on its own, prevent a major crash slash correction in the future if price moves up in a parabolic fashion from here. Pause. And he explains why in just a sec, but I want to be clear. This is one of the big reasons I wanted to highlight this. You are being fed a bunch of BS nonsense narratives from a bunch of people. And maybe maybe they believe them. Maybe, maybe some of these people do. And there's, there is such thing as an echo chamber. I'm just telling you that while they're reporting impressive factual numbers, that is not sufficient to believe that that's going to drive a rally. There's all sorts of other factors at play, including what he says here. Credible Crypto continues. I will add, while this TradFi ETF-driven capital influx is certainly significant, and while the funds may be more sticky than other capital injections, we have seen in the past, this does not mean that these entities are not also in this game, to game, uh, game G-A-M-E, to secure profits. And when TradFi is up 3 to 4x on their investments in 6 to 12 months, something that they have pretty much never seen slash experienced before, you can bet that there will be significant profit taking, which may shift the supply slash demand equation in the opposite direction. Just something to keep in mind when Bitcoin is trading over $100,000 in the next six months or so. And so I'll just pause note here. You and I, we're, I mean, unless you're brand new, you and I are very familiar with dramatic movements in crypto. Three to four X on an afternoon isn't necessarily a big deal, depending on what coin you're talking about, especially the less liquid ones, the, the, the you know, the lower market cap ones where it's easier to move. Um, 
Yeah, we're, we just we see that all the damn time. It, it, we're we're kind of numb to it in many cases, right? Traditional finance people, not so much. If they're new to crypto and they see that, they're going to be a hoot and a holler. Ooh, I got my 30x on the Bitcoins. They're going to be thrilled, man. You think they wouldn't be more likely to take profit, take some of that risk off the table? So I think that's a good point, and we'll see what happens, but what would that do then? So they're all, all these, these especially the Bitcoin maxis, thrilled about this narrative. Uh, you know, all the Bitcoin ETFs. What happens when that flips? Nothing goes up in a straight line forever. Not even purchases on the ETF side. That, that, that's what I'm saying. And then he says, uh, Credible Crypto says, with that being said, enjoy the ride that we are on now. Stay grounded, focus on the charts, and don't let the narrative get you carried away in the coming months. Golf clap for Credible Crypto. Everybody. That is spot on. And that is important because if you're buying into this stuff and, oh my God, it's going to go higher, it's never going to come back down. What does that mean for your all? Because if you understand that these the market moves in tandem, that's going to screw you up everywhere, not just with your Bitcoins. You know, it, it'll screw you up everywhere, potentially. Just don't buy into the narratives. Think for yourself and just be just be cautious. That's all I'm saying here. doesn't mean we can't be excited, too. I'm excited. I mean, I'm, I've been having a blasty blast. Net worth go up. Yeah, I'm happy. It's pretty fun. It's a pretty good time, man. That's all I'm saying. So just be careful. But yes, we are at this time where XRP, it looks like it's ready to climb. It really is. And again, it doesn't mean it's going to happen today, tomorrow, so on and so forth, next week. But we are at that point where either this stuff is going to happen or it's not going to happen. I'm just, I'm just going to be an optimist and I hope that it does. I'm optimistic. A little cautious. Pretty optimistic, though. And we'll just see how this unfolds. We are going to find out together. And, and, and look, nobody knows for sure. And the most uh, insightful and intellectually honest people tell you that, including the blockchain backer and including Credible Crypto, uh, including TXMC. They'll all tell you that because they're being intellectually honest. They have their leanings in where they think this is going to go, and I appreciate that they share that. Nobody knows for sure. That's why when I look at this, I'm just like, I don't know. I think they're both smart and honest, so we'll see what the hell happens. Let's find out together. That's where I'm coming from. I'm glad I'm not a chart guy. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.